<laughs> Hi, I'm Marge Charmley, and I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. Welcome to Buy Cities, a program by, for, and about the Buy community and our friends and allies. Anita Kozan, who is a co-host and co-producer of Buy Cities, is not able to be here today, but she will be back in future episodes. Today, we are very pleased to be filming on location at the Paul and Sheila Wellstone Center in St. Paul with the Because Conference. And uh, we're just thrilled to be here, and I will introduce our first guest. Our first guest is Melinda Brown. And Melinda has come to Because from Nashville, Tennessee. So we will be talking about Nashville, Tennessee, and Melinda's role and what she does there in the Bi community. And we turn to you now. Okay. <laughs> Melinda, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm really glad to be part of this. Um, I um, am very excited to be here at Because, um, because of all the people who are here. Um, there are bisexuals and, and pansexuals in Nashville, Tennessee, but I said I needed to be surrounded by my people. So. Oh yeah, by our tribe, right? Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. It's kind of like, ah, oh, it's uh, a spiritual yes, experience yes, almost yes, to have yes. that, yeah. Yes. yeah. So, um, what I do in Nashville is I am the Women's and Gender Studies Librarian at Vanderbilt. Okay. And um, I do a lot of um, work with the faculty that teach uh, courses like the LGBT studies and um, courses on trans lives and, and history and film, literature and film. Um, and I also work with our Office of LGBTQI Life. Okay. And um, one of the reasons that I think is extremely important to be an out and older bisexual on campus, on our campus in particular, is that our, um, it, it's not, we don't have um, statistics that are valid according to what um, research would indicate need. But the statistics that are kept um, show that the number of students that identify as bisexual or pansexual are more, we have more of them than we do the, that identify as lesbian or gay. And that's been true for the past 10 years at least. Wow. Well, we are not the unicorn. <laughs> no. No, we, we're the horse. We're, we're the horse. At least <laughs> we are the say, horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So. Uh, Tennessee, we were just talking a little bit about that, isn't, uh, doesn't have protections for GLBTQA uh, folks. And so what's it been like for you to be openly bi and you've been there for a while? How is that for you? Well, um, I grew up in Tennessee right, okay. and uh, my family, I'm actually from a family that uh, can trace its roots back to the 1700s in Tennessee. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so um, it, I am an anomaly for people in my family even uh, that I'm um, out and, and progressive. If, we still have a lot of people that um, are definitely on the other side of the political aisle. Yeah. As, as, and so um, being in Tennessee is, uh, is in Nashville, um, it's very common that the first way that people introduce themselves to a new person is to ask them to church or ask them what church they go to. Oh, okay. So that's um, the kind of, that kind of gives you an idea of what environment you're coming to. Um, the um, the people though, the, in Nashville at least, it's a, kind of like a little, a, a huge blue area in the middle of a red state. So. Okay, okay, so there's a little blue over there then, <laughs> right, bisexual right. blue, huh? Bisexual <laughs> blue. Uh, we do have problem a little bit of um, the lesbian gay community doesn't really believe that we exist very much. Um, okay, so there's pushback. Pushback there, yeah. um, and we there are a lot of people that, uh, which is true of a lot of places. I think there are a lot of bisexual 
people that want something, but they're fewer that have the time and energy to actually put into manifesting that. Right. And so right now we don't currently have an active organization in uh, Nashville. However, um, we did for one year um, have uh, an organization called By Tennessee okay. uh, that was like last year. Um, and the uh, we had actually a, an art show for the month of um, for the month of September um, and things like that. So we did some outreach um, and we had people march in our pride parade this All year. Right. And how many? Uh, Shall we? <laughs> well, this year I think many, there were many, maybe, right? maybe like eight people. All right, okay. Um, However, our neighbors to the south, Atlanta, which is much larger, uh, just had their first uh, bi-pan pride march. Uh, they they um, had, it was scheduled by the pride people. Oh, okay. And so they had it yesterday and they had, it looked like a, over a hundred people all right, showed okay. up for that. All and right. So well, it all starts somewhere and builds, somewhere, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I understand that you know one of our local. Well, she was local. Lauren Beach. <laughs> yes. Who was just an absolute rock star. You know, whatever was by here in the by cities, Lauren had involvement in. So you worked with her at Vanderbilt. I did. I did. Yes. And um, Lauren actually helped start. Um, by Tennessee. Okay. Uh, she was probably instrumental in, in helping me um, decide that yes, it was time for us to start something. And um, because she's she's a rock star, I think anywhere she a goes. Everywhere she goes, she takes yes, lots yes, of buy energy. Yes, she yeah, does. Yeah, she yeah, does. Yeah. And um, I really appreciate um, all the things that she accomplished while she was there. She did. Um, had avenues for getting us out and doing trainings. And right. um, she did a lot of outreach into organizations that she had access to um, that, that were really positive for us to um, have that networking. Um, she, she's just an amazing person. So. Yeah, she's got energy for 100 people, I think. She does, so, she yeah. does. I was so sad when she moved to Chicago. <laughs> I know, yeah. But she's closer to y'all Closer now. to us now. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, how long um, have you sort of identified as bi, and what was it like for you, if you don't mind sharing no, your story about what it was like to come out? Because, you know, I know for me as being a little older bi, it was pretty lonely for a long time yeah. and, you know, had to push back both from the, the straight and the uh, gay and lesbian community. So, you know, what was mm -hmm. that like for you? Yeah, um, so I identified, when I first came out, when I was um, 18, I identified as lesbian. Okay. And so um, it took me uh, about eight years before I came out again as uh -huh. bisexual yeah. when I first started being attracted to men or uh -huh. acknowledging that attraction. Yes, yes. I guess that's it. Um, and indeed it was pretty lonely. Yeah. Um, I knew one or two bisexuals, but I was like, there have got to be more people out yeah, there. Yeah. And um, so I was actually living in the Midwest when I started having in Man in Milwaukee and okay. had getting ready to move to Madison, Wisconsin to uh, finish up school. And so when I moved to Madison, I said, I need to start a group or something. Okay. Um, and um, so I started a, a bi women's support group that ended up turning into a mixed group after a couple of years and um, which I'm not sure what ha I think that it, it survived for quite a while after I left and um, it was wonderful just having other people and 
um, and that was right around the time it was the early 90s. Okay. And so there was a lot of bioactivism that was happening and happening in Minneapolis. Right. And Our because conference started in 1992. So right, yeah, right. yeah, there's a so, surge of it. Surge of it. The um, so it it just kind of um, by net I think got uh -huh. formed around then. So it, it was. Um, I, w I just was, my intersection with bisexual activism just came at the right time and place to kind of be moved into that. So every place that I would move to, if there wasn't an organization, I would start a bi women's group. <laughs> That's fabulous. That's fabulous. So you were really early on, you know, part of the bi movement. Right. Yeah, good right. for you. Right. So Hats off to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, now I, I um, kind of wonder about the wisdom of always feeling like if you need if you need support that you're the one that starts your own support group. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes you have to. And yeah. So, it, fortunately, some places already had one, and so that was good. That um, that really worked out well. <laughs> Well, and, you know, as we go through different developmental stages and aging, you know, That's some of our support and need for different kinds of support changes. So you, you may still true. have to That's true. I know. start by women's That's groups. True. Or, That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you are here, you know, just to be here, but also you're presenting at the yes. uh, Because. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the workshop that you're... Sure. The uh, main part of the title is Who Are We Inviting to the Dance? And it comes from um, a, it, the workshop itself is about inclusion. And I think that all bi organizations um, are interested in increasing inclusion mm -hmm. uh, um, or have, an, have the ability to look at their organization and say, are we doing enough to increase inclusion? And inclusion can mean anything from um, are we having at a time when people with kids or youth um, can attend some of the events? Mm -hmm. um, to um, are there some events that are at an alcohol-free location? Um, even if you have others that are are at a pl establishment, maybe you have an outing that goes to a, a, a cafe or a bar kind of place mm -hmm. that has that, um, to looking at the fact that a lot of uh, organizations in the bi community are um, predominantly white mm -hmm. and that we might want to look for more um, Members from underrepresented communities, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, and just accessibility in a lot of different sure. ways. Yeah. So the the n the name of my con um, workshop comes from a diversity or yeah a diversity trainer named Verne Myers who is very good. She has a TED talk out there that I highly recommend. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and she basically s says. Um, diversity is inviting people to the party, and inclusion is asking them to dance. Oh, all right. So you just don't want it to be wallflowers. Huh? Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's lovely. So, yeah. So, it, is this a workshop that you've done in other places, or are we privileged to have the first? You're the, are, you're the, are, the first right. group. So. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, what can some, you know, by the time this airs, you will have done the workshop. So can you give us a little sneak preview of what you're going to say? Sure. All sure. right. <laughs> well, what I mean, you said once we're filmed there <laughs> on the air, but, yeah. Well, I think, I think that, you know, what I just said, like, every organization can, can do an evaluation of their organization and, and figure out, are there ways that we're not reaching some group of people that we want to reach? And um, I think that that's an ongoing process. And so maybe at the end of each year might be a natural time when people can sit down and kind of determine that. Um, the when you're thinking about how do you how do you reach out to uh, underrepresented 
um, populations. A lot of the way that we do that in organizations is we say, well, let's let's check off a box and have somebody on our board. Yeah. Let's bring somebody in to be a, a keynote speaker. Uh -huh. We don't want to stop those things. Those are good things. Right. That's <laughs> a start. That's a start. Yeah. Um, what we can also do is look and see, are there people that are doing uh, some kind of trainings that might be a skill training? Uh, so is there an organization in your town that is looking at um, accessibility or um, looking at unconscious bias or something like that? Mm -hmm. They're offering either a free or a low-cost training that you could, your group members, your board members, your group members can attend. Um, is there something like a black pride that if you have a predominantly white group has never been to black, black pride, mm -hmm. have a meet up there. Sure. Go yeah, yeah, meet, yeah. go talk to people at the tables um, so that when your group wants to table there, you know people there. And yeah. so, so it's like inserting ourselves into their spaces, not in an intrusive or awful way, but just going and showing up right so that the invitation makes it easier for them to right i mean if we're inviting them to our space yeah yeah exactly you know, it's like whoever them is yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, it's like you want to um go and yeah go and go and meet people yeah show up yeah 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 <laughs> is there anything about your life or nashville tennessee or or the Because Conference. I mean, you know, I'm wondering how your experience has been at Because. Uh, we're on our third day right now as we're filming, but. <laughs> um, I have had a wonderful time here. It, um, I think that my memory of it, it's been probably 15 or 20 years since I've been here, and my memory, um, was that more people were coming from other parts of the country, um, which may or may not be true. I mean, it's like, I think I was up here in this area. Um, however, the quality of workshops, it's just as if there were people coming from everywhere. The quality of workshops are fantastic. Uh, the people I've been interacting with have been great. I have loved every minute of it. Um, I would definitely recommend it to, to other people to come. Um, I mean, it's the only by conference that's only by PN plus people, and so it's great. Yeah, and, yeah. And um, so I think that I would, I'd love it. <laughs> I'm well, they, they may ask you to be a poster child for Because <laughs> next year, okay. which I believe, for those of you who are wanting to come to Because, it's supposed to be the first weekend in October in 2020. So uh, it's too late to come this year if you haven't already been here, but put it on your calendar. <laughs> and one of the things about this year is it was also started on uh, National Coming Out Day. Uh, so how yeah. fun was that? That huh? was great. Yeah. 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 And you got to meet Robin Oaks, but you probably met her before. I know. But yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you go back a ways. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, Melinda Brown, for sure. being at Because, for being part of our community, for doing the work that you do. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that you had to really start groups wherever you went to create community. And that was so needed to have a space because we all know what it's like to. Uh, be invisible, by erasure, to, to not be welcome, and that you would create welcome spaces out of necessity but also out of goodness yes. that you did that. And I'm just so pleased to have met you and had you on by cities and Thank you. Uh, keep up the great work. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> would you like to join us in our signature goodbye? Yes. All right. Bye for Bye. now. Bye. <laughs>
Ja, 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 ja,